legendary uh, theatre director Peter Brook has died at the age of 97. A true visionary, Brook perfected the art of staging powerful drama in unusual venues. Brook was based in France for most of his career, transforming the theatre world here and across the globe. Now we will, uh, now we will uh, have this report from France 24's Yinka Oyatari on Peter Brook's career. Um, here she is. Le théâtre est là pour montrer le visible et l'invisible en même temps. With his perfect French spoken with a slight British accent, Peter Brook wild crowds in France and all over the world, earning him a place among the greatest theatre directors of the 20th century. Born in London in 1925, Brook moved to Paris in the late 1960s, transforming the once neglected Théâtre des Bouches du Nord into his company headquarters. Ici, les gens viennent, je crois, d'une manière simple, naturelle et ouverte, et parfois pour être touché. Si on arrive à les toucher, on est touché nous-mêmes. He rose to fame with his masterpiece, the Mahabharata, an ancient Hindu epic, which Brooke presented at the Avignon Arts Festival in 1985. Pour les Indiens, c'est un peu. The piece was nine hours long and was performed around the world. Actors in Brooks plays also came from across the globe. He described working with them as magic. C'est une rencontre. Exactement comme dans la vie. Peu à peu, on rentre dans la vie, dans les difficultés, dans les joies de cette personne d'une manière plus profonde. Et C'est ce mouvement, cette progression qui crée l'émotion. Brooke was a talented filmmaker and writer who rejected labels. He was constantly experimenting. One of his peers even called him the greatest innovator of his generation. Well, uh, we can welcome our guest tonight, journalist and film critic N.T. Bin. Uh, you are also co-author of the book Stage, the Theatre and Cinema, which was prefaced by Peter Brook. Tell us, um, just for people that are not familiar with his work, why was he such a visionary? Um, well, I think his uh, main quality was to reach for the essential. And, um, you know, he, he hated theatricality. Um, I think it has to do with the fact that at first he wanted to be a film director and then he found out how hard it was to compromise with producers and so he turned to theatre and um, he didn't want, uh, when the actors rehearsed for instance, he didn't want them to project their voices. He wanted them to, to speak, to even whisper, just like uh, we heard him talk uh, a few minutes a few minutes ago. Um, and then the, the text had to resonate inside them to be able to uh, be projected in a second, you know, phase. And because he wanted to, to strip um, the, the text or the, what he was uh, trying to convey uh, of all unnecessary um, niceties or um, so I think this essential um, work is uh, his main characteristic. Now, he's known for his vision of what he called the empty space. Can you explain what that is to, to viewers? Um, well, I, I could uh, perhaps describe the theatre in which I discovered his work. Um, it, it's called Les Bouffes du Nord in one of the hottest and, you know, hardest areas in, in Paris. And he came from the Royal Shakespeare Company. And he just, but he wanted total freedom. And so he found this all, you know, rundown music hall theater that uh, was not renovated mm, uh, since the 1930s. And this was, this was the early 70s. It was a, a, a ruin, almost derelict. And he decided to uh, produce Timon of Athens by Shakespeare in the, this theater without any sets, you know, empty space, a stage, which means that the, the ruin that was the theater itself became his set, 
his for for the play, and he made it an unforgettable experience uh, because um, you know it, when it was raining, it was raining through the roof, so he had basins you know for for the the rain. Never mind, and and he wanted the actors to be as close as possible to the viewers. So it sounds like a totally immersive experience. I mean, it's it's, Absolutely. it's a shame to have missed it, actually. Um, I wanted to also ask about um, his productions because they were noted for their diversity. And he was a pioneer of what he called color rich as opposed to color blind casting. What were his views on diversity in the theater industry? Well, um, he had a, a global view of, of theater and um, his, uh, his center Uh, was called Le Centre International de Recherche Théâtrale, which means International Center for Theatrical Research. And so he invited actors from all over the world to, sp to speak in French when he was in Paris, or, you know, he uh, his plays, his shows were uh, shown everywhere um, on the earth. And uh, uh, this was part of You know, even the accents of the actors was important for us to um, to uh, be conscious of the fact that he was showing us, um, you know, uh, not dated works by Shakespeare or, or classics or Chekhov, but universal, um, you know, works of arts that could resonate in, you know, today's. Um, uh, viewers. Okay, I'm afraid that's all we have time for, um, NT Bin. Thank you very much for joining us tonight on France 24. That's it from us. There's more news coming up.